call to order the regular meeting for the Lemister Conservation Commission for September 11, 2018, uh, in remembrance of the tragedies of 9 11, 2001. I'd like to take a moment of silence, please. Thank you. All right, we'll start with our continued hearings. Pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40 is amended. There'll be a public hearing to consider a notice of intent by Thomas Christopher from Christopher Environmental regarding the removal of dirt and fill from wetland in the 100 foot buffer zone of the bordering vegetated wetland. Address 141 Lincoln Street, map 564, lot 49, <coughs> DEP 199. 1072. There's someone representing the applicant. Good evening, folks. Nice to see you again. I guess I'll uh, start out by uh, saying thanks for coming out the other night. That was a less than uh, pleasant day to be out looking at wetlands. Uh, when we were here the last time, uh, the uh, commission wanted to uh, have a site walk, and in preparation for that site walk, I said that I would uh, delineate the wetland and uh, I would measure out by tape uh, a distance of 100 feet away from the wetland uh, to an area that we would designate as a repository for the fill that we would be taking out of the wetland. Um, we visited the site. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, certainly be glad to answer them. Uh, I believe Vice Chairman Stone uh, brought up a point of making sure that we have some sort of uh, protection uh, along the restored area so that none of the fill rolls back in and I have suggested that we use uh, uh, straw blankets uh, after we see uh, the, uh, the area with the wetland seat. So I'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you have or any uh, conditions that you'd like to place on the project. Comments? Questions? Well, I didn't get it to get out there, so if I mean, if someone did, did go, <coughs> we want to just kind of, if there's any concerns that, or things that they want to summarize, you know, just so. And any major issues or concerns? And just to sum it up, I mean, most of us were there. Um, there was definitely filling the wetland. Uh, it's very hard to, to f see where the wetland and, and non-filled material is, we're yeah. going to have to rely on the engineer to, you know, distinguish that as we dig it out. Uh, it was definitely line drawn, wetlands were delineated fairly well. Um, I know you walked the line pretty exclusively and then we went up to the area which was outside of the um, 100 foot buffer and they marked out an area to deposit the fill okay. there. Did have a slight downgrade to the to the resource area, so like Mr. Stone mentioned, you know, once the fill's there until it gets vegetated to, you know, keep it stable. Basically, keep it stable. But um, overall, it's unfortunately there's the pictures are pretty accurate, yeah. and it is what it is. And we're just going to have to dig it until we find out where the right. wetland is underneath right. from the existing yeah. path. So yeah, so basically, uh, we'll start where the original wetland. Uh, soil it could easily be determined. We'll pull it back with an excavator and it'll be a um, step at a time and stand there with a muscle color chart and make sure you're doing it the way it's supposed to be done. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Yes. Do you, do you know when this work will likely be done? It probably won't get started until October. Uh, I'd like to get it done as soon as possible. Uh, I'm kind of bogged down right now with a couple of other projects that uh, I'm caught up with, and uh, he's also going to make arrangements for equipment. Okay. He does have uh, a person that he works with, because uh, he's in the construction business, that uh, is just finishing up a job, and as soon as uh, we can get the equipment in there, um, we'll, we'll uh, get going on it. Um, if we have to work on Saturdays, and I suspect because of my schedule, we may have to work on several Saturdays, that's what we'll do. But my intention is to get it certainly done by uh, mid-November at the latest, I would hope. 
if we get in there and things go well, you know, we could probably get out of there in a couple of days. I guess my only comment um, would make is obviously being in late fall, you're not going to get any vegetation to grow. So we just want to make sure mm -hmm. that, you know, where we put the stuff, it's <coughs> definitely contained for the, for the, Right. You know. uh, well, as you noted when you were out there, we do have some uh, used straw wattles, but they they are they are in pretty good condition. So uh, we'll put those in place um, before we do uh, any of the restoration work. Um, generally speaking, uh, wetland seed at this time of year isn't going to do a thing. Correct. Uh, I think <laughs> Mr. Stone's uh, uh, suggestion of a straw blanket down there is is certainly uh, worthy and timely. Yeah. Okay. That'd be my only comment. Is Sure. During the winter time, obviously, whether you start the work tomorrow or <coughs> before the snow, you're not going to get any vegetation. No. So. And I would expect uh, that I would not be back here till probably springtime right. for certificate compliance on that, because uh, you know we want to be certain, certainly on my end, that we're getting it done right the first time. Right. Okay. I've got a question. Yes, sir. In terms of the process, uh, the excavator, I assume, will be a track excavator yes and I say that as far as I know and will the excavator itself do the digging and the transporting to the uplands no. is we'll the trucks involved we'll also have a loader there okay right. so the excavator will dig out dump into dump the load it. and the loader will drive up right um, I forget how many trees might be yanked out of there you mean in the, in, the, in the repository right, area? Right, to get to that upland site, I don't know. To me, it looked kind of mm -hmm. narrow to be able to get any kind of a truck or a, a well, machine up there. You might. Yeah. You might. You might. Yeah, I, I, that actually was not one of my biggest concerns. Yeah. This is an area of the repository, and he still has got uh, quite a few trees to take out, I shouldn't say quite a few, he's got several trees to take out in the repository area. Right. But if okay. you recall, and maybe you don't because everybody wants to get out of there because it's <laughs> <laughs> And uh, there are at least five mosquitoes. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, would, uh, I would say uh, even uh, a medium-sized loader would, would be able to get up there all right. Okay. You know, we're not looking at something that's got an eight-yard bucket on it. We're probably looking mm -hmm. at something that has a, Maybe a three, I thought. Yeah. Maybe a four. I was curious of the process. That's the type of uh, equipment, or the scale of the equipment that we would be using. Yep. Okay. I, I, from what I saw, I didn't think they would need, if that's it was exactly what they're open. doing. Think, there's a few trees that have to There was a few in. trees, but <coughs> loaders are pretty, if that's how the way they go on, they're pretty right. agile, so I don't think we'll have to take some trees down. Well, you know. Not to move it, anyways. I guess one of the goals is to not do any further damage. Right. Right. Any other questions or comments? Okay. All right. Anybody in the audience like to speak on this notice of intent? Second time and third and final time. Any objection to closing it to the public? All right. I declare the public hearing closed. Um, do I have a motion or any recommendations? I'll make a motion for a standard order of conditions with a boil lock plate. Um, and an additional condition to include the installation of a straw blanket to stabilize the area over the um, winter time. Do I have a second on that? Second. All in favor? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, Just obviously always keep Angela in. Oh, certainly. Uh, I'm guessing that you'll be signing this at your next meeting. We signed tonight, but definitely in the next meeting. Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep in touch with Angela and yep. uh, we'll go forward from that uh, point. I'll get signage up there immediately okay. and uh, we'll just sit and wait for the equipment. Perfect. Thank you very much, thank ladies you. and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our regular meeting. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to shift things around a little bit. Is that all right? Um, I'd like to move new business to the uh, start of our meeting. Um, 19 Willow Street, Lemonster. We had a site walk on September 7th in regards of the wetland behind the homeowner's property. Um, who was not at the site walk? Was Jim 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 Jim. Was. 
Unfortunately, I did take some pictures. I didn't get a chance to print them out. Um, again, from what I saw, there was definitely uh, a wetland, basically right to the borders of the fenced-in backyard. Um, there was definitely some filling of an area. I do have some pictures on my phone if you'd like to take a look at them. Unfortunately, I couldn't print them. Um, basically, that's basically the area that was filled. Um, there's a fence in the back of the property, and directly behind the fence, like I said, there's a, I don't know how big it's hard to judge from that, maybe 20 feet by 10 or 15 feet of filled. Um, and from all indications, the wetland, at least at one point, was definitely up to the fence. I mean, it was cattails where I was standing up against the fence, so it's, it's right there. So, um, Mr. Stone took the brave initiative to walk around the entire wetland. Um, <laughs> I guess to, you know, to look at that. So, basically, that's what we have. Um, you know, it was yard waste, some little bit of gravel, but mainly yard waste leaves, yep. grass clippings, things like that. Deposit in the wetlands. So. What did you happen to find when you walked around, Mr. Stone? Well, it's, it's a wetland. Um, what I'm trying to sort through is whether or not it's a jurisdictional wetland. Okay. So it's it's it definitely meets the criteria for what area. What <coughs> what I found was there did seem to be um, when you well let me back up a minute when you see an area like that. You, you look for jurisdiction in a couple areas, either it's bordering vegetated or it's isolated and it will hold a quarter acre for water. <clears throat> Intuitively, looking at the size wise, it's probably undersized for a quarter of an acre, but you'd have to run calculations to determine that just to see if it would pass that test. Um, I have not done that. The other thing you look for is, is does it meet the bordering vegetated criteria? So basically, does it border on something? There is a outlet that does look like it could definitely be a channel um, towards the back. If you're if you're looking at the wetland from the house towards the back left, you can kind of see where it depresses and leaves in this similar wetland vegetation that falls in a narrow path. That goes off site though, so I didn't walk that area because it wasn't on um, the 19 Willow Street property. So I think to get a true accurate assessment of what's there, you need to do a little bit more investigating off site. So that would involve contacting the other property owners and see if we could take a look at it from that view. What properties would that be on Willow Street or it's Great it's Street um it? I would say it's probably forty two Abadav, possibly twenty Abadav. We'll pull up the ortho and see if said that they installed a fence about a year ago, I think, is so what? I think you said last April. Last April. Um, from my knowledge, I don't remember them coming in front of us. Do we know if there was any um, conversations with anybody on the commission at that time or the um, department or anything like they that? They did speak to Marco Bankrazi, my predecessor, about it. Okay. Um, he said, you know, due to safety reasons, obviously they have young children. You, you don't want the children or any of the toys or any debris going into the wetland. So he okay. said the fence was fine. Okay. Can I just make a quick comment on it? Yeah. The um, fence says is safety is irrelevant, but under the um, Wetlands Protection Act, there is a minor exemption for fencing as long as it doesn't create a wildlife barrier. So whether it's safety related or not, if they have to come to the commission, they have to come to the commission. But the defense itself is an exempt minor activity. So as long as there was no risk work done to that fence, then the homeowner could absolutely put that in the our approval. Is there, does it go to the ground though? Does it create a wildlife barrier? Even if it did, I wouldn't consider that a wildlife barrier. There's still plenty of, of okay. access around yeah. that. Okay. And, the, and the, to the topo from that wetland area, I mean, it's, it's a two to one sloper operator in areas. It's, there's actually some old silt fencing that's in the wetlands that I assume was installed prior to that excavation for the fence. 
Yes. I don't know. I didn't ask, but yeah. I didn't soak that thing. It there. was there. Yeah, I saw that as logical well. conclusion. Mm -hmm. Great. That um, that wetland actually does go out, and I believe it is 42 Abbott Ave. And if you go over and stand in front of the property on Abbott Ave, you can see it's a lawn area, and they've basically outlined the entire channel with stone. So that as okay. the water comes out of there in the heavy rains or maybe in the springtime, it goes down through that channel, it goes under Abbott Ave, and heads over towards Highland. And I believe it puddles up at the end of Highland um, in a triangular area. There's some work being done there now by the DPW. I don't know what that work consists of. But so um, I think they might be just, they might be doing a water line there, and that's been on for a while now. now. So it, I'm sorry, let's back up one second, Paul. So it goes on the ground. It goes under Abbott Ave in front of 42. Under Abbott in front of 42. So they have kind of a hammerhead shaped lot with just a little bit of frontage there. So right at that frontage. Mm -hmm. do, you want, do you want to take a look at? It might, it might not be 42. I, I drove over Abbott just to take a look. So that's, that's 19 right there. And then 42. Okay, it's really in. 42. No, it's not. It's um. It's either 14 or 20. It's one of those two. Okay. And there's a stone channel that goes right to the road, and it goes under Abbott. I believe it goes under Highland, and it empties out in this little triangular area on this piece of property. This this piece here between Abbott and Highland, or. I mean, it, this is this has got to be upgraded from from that, so it's got to empty out down here somewhere if it does daylight. Yeah, it's probably this triangle, not this one. This is Stearns, right? Correct. Yep. So there's that house right there in yeah. the corner, Stearns. They have their driveway that comes out. Here's here's where all the the, the equipment and material is stockpiled right on this road here. Right. I'm not sure because when you're standing over here, you can't tell where 19 yeah, is. Yeah, let me pull up another area because I think, I think the stone trench that you're describing, you can actually see that in north of. Um, if I may, yes. I did know that I did find um, orders of conditions from you know the 80s. I think it was the 80s for 20 Abbott as well. That might be where the silt fencing that you saw on the site's from. I wasn't there, so I don't know the age of it. But they did have an order of condition. Um, but I believe it was very wasn't very detailed to the age of it, but it looked like it was for those pictures of the tennis court that's right there. So I think that was a vibe that was in response to an enforcement order. Still looking for the rest of the files, but yeah, we've been out there probably about on at the, right at the end of Stearns Ave. If you where there's a house right there with an extensive wetland system right in the backyard. I remember we had gone out there um, five or six years ago because they were complaining about flooding in the, their property. And it's just, it's a low point, so and that kind of just blends into that. Um, if you guys need any help, we'd be glad to share with you. Absolutely. Sure. I'm Rick Mashi, the ward counselor. 224 Mary, ma'am, nice to see you all today. Tough day, September 11th, but thank you for doing this. Um, so I moved in the neighborhood in 59, so I'm pretty much familiar with, with that area. Um, it was always wet, especially across the street, on the other side of Willow Street. So between Willow and the George Street School, we always used to skate back there as kids. And what happened was, um, not the first house that's on the corner, but the second, third, and fourth house, we all, there was always a skating rink back there to the point where they put in some dry wells. Um, one of the local contractors for back in the 60s and 70s was uh, lived in one of the houses, so he helped to mitigate some of the things for those families working with the city. On the other side of the street, um, I live on the I lived, grew up on the corner of Blossom and Willow, and we used to have water in our basement, but we were lucky because we were the higher of the neighborhood, so everything kind of was in back of us. But um, as kids, we used to play in this area, and the backyard um, of Ed and his wife was actually, where you walk into the backyard, you might see like a high spot a little bit in the middle, there was actually a barn there. 
you know, what happened before Ed and his wife purchased the house, um, that barn was knocked down. But one of the people that lived in the fourth house on the left, not to say names, uh, built the house up in back of everyone um, off of Abbott Avenue with the long driveway. And what they did was they built tennis courts. And this, this probably went back to the very early 70s when this happened. And when they built the tennis courts, they just backfilled that whole area. And it just pushed everything into that small area that you're taking a look at right now. Before, there was, we used to play back there. We had a little league field. We had a baseball field. We had a sandlot football field. You know, it, it, was, it was wet on occasion, heavy rain. That was about it. But it was something that, you know, the, the lady that lived in the house, the Mays family, that went back to the turn of the century, actually, had a farm. And they used to farm that back when they had raspberry patches and rhubarb and everything else. And it was pretty much an open space area walking all the way up and through that neighborhood. So it was a nice area for the kids to play. It was dry. It wasn't a problem. When the tennis courts came in, it kind of pushed everything. Things started to gather back there. Uh, a few years back, the one, two, third house on the left going down, going up Abbott Avenue, the Marama family, started to experience... Um, they, they always experienced, but it started to intensify the amount of water that was encroaching on their property to the point where Mrs. Marama couldn't use her basement. I mean, it was in there knee deep at, at times on he with heavy rains. And so what happened was, um, they, in order to mitigate that, they put some pumps in, they pumped it into the street. I met with the mayor. We were able to put in some drainage going down into that area that you're talking about tonight. Um, it's still not resolved because they still have collection of water down that area that has to be resolved. But for the most part, the houses on Abbott were in pretty good shape at that point. Um, when, when Ed and his wife bought the house, uh, the Conway family that lives right next door, 23 Willow, uh, we were friends growing up and they'd been there forever. And um, what happened was uh, Timmy introduced me to Ed and, and Ed was, we, we, you know, we talked about the backyard and everything and he had bought the house. The people lost it, I think, the family before him, so it was in really bad shape. They tore the barn down. They didn't pull permits to do it. It was a mess. Um, so what happened was he wanted. To, he's a police officer, I believe, in Harvard. He knows laws. He wants to. He wants to do the right thing. He wants to be a good citizen. He doesn't want to to violate anything. So at that time, I came downtown here. I met with Marco Bengrazi. He came up. He did a site visit, and uh, he walked through the area. It was very dry that particular day, and um, Ed told him, "This is what I want to do. I have my wife's expecting, and I have a toddler." and we just want to close off the backyard, plant the lawn. We're not planning on using that back there for anything because part of it's his, part of it's neighbors, that also abut it. But uh, the bottom line was he just wanted to keep the kids from going back there as we, as we all would probably want to do with our kids. So um, I had been away from the property for a long time until this came up. Um, and, but I have to tell you honestly, and I think Marco would say as well, what he said he was going to do is exactly what he did. You know, he put the fence where he said he was wanted to put the fence. He, you know, his lawn was his lawn, and that was it. So it's a nice, it's a nice backyard, as you witnessed. Um, and in back of the fence, there's only a small path for him to be able to walk back there, with it, where the growth begins again. And he did dump back there. He, he, you know, not thinking it was a wetland. Uh, Michael didn't identify it as a wetland, and that's the reason why he was able to go forward without coming before the board at that particular point. He wouldn't have had a problem coming before the board. You know, he, would, he always wanted to do the right thing. You guys know that, that have met him and his wife as well. So he's, he's kind of in a bind right now. Um, I, was, I thought that the wetland would be more disturbed than it actually is, but it really isn't compared to when he moved in, I have to tell you that. Um, I don't know about trees down. I'm not, you know, I, I can't remember seeing that kind of stuff happening. I think that um, the protective hay piece there might have come in a while back. It may have been when the city was working with Mrs. Marama to try to mitigate her water problem because that does go back a few years. Um, I don't know if they came through you guys for that, but you may see something on record on that piece right there, unless it was just a DPW thing that they actually did. But it's, it's always been, um, since the tennis courts went in, it kind of encroached on that property back there and made it what you see today, you know. Um, he, he's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, they're good people. They just want to do the right thing, and um, so that you know, if you have any questions on that, that's that's basically what I know of it. Right. I mean, I guess it all comes down to what kind of wetland is it? Um, 
if, if it is in fact a, a wetland, whatever, unfortunately, up to his front porch is in the border, it is the buffer yeah. zone. So he can't do anything. Right. Not that we're going to say take fences down because that's done and it is what it is. Um, you know, obviously it's filled. We would ask him to remove that material and, and whatnot. But I would almost have to say he can't even do anything past the fence. Like he has a path and, and yeah. th that, you, you can't even mow in there, right. to be honest with you. You yeah. know what I mean? So, I, I totally understand. So that's, it's just up to, is that, you know, what kind of a wetland is it? Yeah. And then what rules yeah. apply to that? Was it registered as a wetland in the state or was it a federal thing or? <laughs> just there is, to answer that question, there is no wetland registry. So it's, it's yeah. site specific. And so it's also a determination based on the commission at the time? <coughs> Correct. Okay, yep. I understand. So I think they'd be the first ones to agree to whatever conditions you guys put on their property regarding the use of it. And as far as, you know, getting a bunch of high school kids in there to help clean out some of the grass clippings, things like that, and they just let it go and let it be a habitat is fine. Right. I think the, the only other question I have on that would be the mosquito population. We're all really sensitive, especially where they've, they've identified things right here in Lominster. So how far would you go with a family to be able to spray the area, the backyard? Can they spray their backyard? That we, we've talked about that with mosquito control a couple yeah. of meetings ago because we've noticed a lot of people have been hiring these outside people. Right, right. We didn't really come to any conclusions, you know, as a commission, Angela. Um, so I did speak to a different couple different um, other agents and a couple other mosquito companies. They will not spray in a wetland. Um, they'll spray from the street, they'll spray the front yard, um, but they won't spray directly into the wetland. The wetland. It's probably a PR thing we need to get out to the whole community. Well, the other, the other thing that you can do, and I, I think Lemster is part of the Central Mass Mosquito Control Project. We are. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you can always reach out to them and okay. start they can lend any support. Yeah. It's good to know. Thank you. Yeah, we, like I said, we addressed it probably yeah. two or three meetings ago because we've seen a lot of trucks riding around. And right. You know, that's the whole thing. We don't want people spraying into a wetland or if they spray the yard. Do it, do it responsibly, I think. Exactly. Kind of yeah. Yeah. Can I ask to borrow Paul's eyes for a second? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> With or without um, class. Mr. Chairman, I yes. just want to say um, a few of the neighbors' houses 41, 45, and the one on the other side of 41 did give us permission to go um, in their backyards. Okay. On Abbott? Um, on, on Willow. Willow Street. On Willow. Okay. Because um, I think it's 45 or 41. 23 is a calm way. Um, 45 or 41, they do have a wetland back of their property that, that she did mention okay. to me. Okay. So, that was the highest spot of the neighborhood, by the way. So when I when I went out there, this was the area I was looking at where I thought I could see a channel forming. Mm -hmm. And from the area, it kind of looks like what you described. Right. Right. Um, right in through there. That definitely looks like it. And I bet it goes right down here. Because yeah. you can see it when you're standing on the road. I think that's it right there. Right. And where it, where it goes is really... Um, not germane to it. It's it's the fact that you do have that channel, even it, mm -hmm. even if it's just a sort section, and then it goes into a blind area. It's still yeah. a still a stream at that point. That whole um, that whole area feeds right into Stur the Stearns Avenue. Yeah, in the back of the synagogue, it all just yeah. it all empties right there. We have problems years ago on Abbott on uh, Stearns Ave. I'm sorry, Arlington Street. Okay. In the back of all those properties, flooding all the time ways so with can't. silt that it built up. Too far, okay. right? Yeah, the grade is going up there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like that's exactly what's happening. It's all the sterns. That's it. That's the channel right there. Yeah. And it's all filled with rock. Okay. Yeah. I, think I used to walk that area when we lived on Washington Street. <laughs> and I could see the water coming out of there. And yeah. It would, it would come up. I mean, it was like a stream. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the next steps at the commission at this point? My, my opinion is it's worth if we have the the abutters consent to, to look at it it's worth looking at it just so that we're 100 percent sure it is jurisdictional okay because if it's not jurisdictional then the homeowner hasn't done anything wrong at this point right um but if it is jurisdictional then obviously we probably want to address the fill that was being made. right so all right we'll take a look i can see on the record that there was no more fill that you saw when you did your site visit than was there when he bought the property it was the guy before him when he knocked that barn down. He caused all kinds of havoc back there. It wasn't like that before. It was just 
natural, you know. Yeah, it's it's difficult when oh, it's property tough. owners, you know, you, you know, when you go there, it's definitely filled. Yeah, you definitely could tell us so just who did it. Yeah, right. And it's, right. Not that it's really at this point, you know, we were dressing, filling right. in the wetland, and, and that was very evident. But yeah, history, you guys make, it looks like it's yeah. some issues there. But. When you make the determination on the quarter acre, does that go right to the street? The, no. the, um, the quarter acre is if it's isolated. Okay. What, what we've discussed more recently this evening is we don't feel it's isolated anymore. So if it has that channel leaving it, then it becomes a border and wetland. And it becomes okay. jurisdictional. Okay. Isolated wetlands can also be jurisdictional, but they've got to be a minimum size, which is whole quarter acre foot of water. Mm -hmm. yeah. so. What would you want them to do as homeowners right now? At this point, I don't think anything, just so okay. we can figure out what kind of wetland, just you know, wetlands okay. change obviously, but for our sake, just to decide to confirm is it a bordering vegetated wetland at that point, Angela will, you know, most likely it's going to be if we decide that's what it is, it'll be remove yeah. the material, you know, probably by hand, right? And then just kind of let it grow back in, but okay, we'll, we'll do that. So, but at this point, just tell them not to do not to add anything to it, yeah, and won't. then we'll be in touch with our findings and our. Okay. Things like that. All right, so. Very good. All okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Some big description on the site warrant for those other properties. Or? Um. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, I'll reach out to them just let them know what day. And yeah. Just to let people know walking around their backyard yeah. and <laughs> whatnot. That's fine. I have a I have a little bit of time during the week, so maybe I can. Maybe we can coordinate something okay. real quick too. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Um, let's talk about Hill Street real quick, if that's not a problem. Um, obviously, Mr. O'Brien's been in communication with us for trail stewards. I'm a little confused, <laughs> to say the least, on their involvement. Um, I did see an email, obviously, from Angela saying that they absolutely positively want to get involved and mm -hmm. do some trails and, and help us out along the way. Um, I was hoping he was going to be here, but <laughs> he did not show up to the last two meetings. Um, so we can talk about, uh, Angela printed up some signs here. You know, one of the big things that when it's, this is all said and done is the signage on the site and how we're going to make that entrance kind of pretty. Um, actually, before I go too far, you said the, it says here the city's survey. We know the property lines now. Yep. Um, so when the survey's very well and he put stakes in all the property lines, you know, where everything is, so we're able, you know, kind of get started with the work where we want to put the gravel. Um, I did talk to the building department. He said we um, are all set to put the new kiosk up. Okay. Uh, as long as it's far enough, you know, not going to be in the middle of the road, he said. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. So. Okay. Um, Should we determine the extent of the parking lot before we think about where the kiosk is going to go? Yeah, we can you know, think. do that. What did the grant say? Did it specify? <laughs> it just says, you know, parking just area. Parking. Um, when I spoke to Mr. Owuso um, from the state, he said, you know, four cars, there's a couple spots. Yeah. It's a gravel area where, where people can pull off the road. It's noticeable when you're driving by, oh, that's a spot I can park to go hiking or, you know. Right. Okay. I think that's reasonable for yeah. four spots in anyway, you know. Yeah. Out by the road. Yeah, I think know. right in front of like, where that little, little vegetated area is with the kiosk. Yeah. Put a little gravel in the area. Yeah, it's um, close to the road. And easy to maintain. Yeah. yeah so. I went by one in Sterling, and I, I don't know if it was the one that you know, we talked about. We were talking about the last meeting, right. but instead of doing like anything on the ground, what they actually did is they just put like four by fours, you know, posts around, and they just use some like they drill the hole and ran yeah, some like wire, or yeah, chain something or something, or, or, yeah. and just like that, yeah, that like thin wire, yeah. so that you don't drive beyond that, but. I, it, I, I think that's something that might, I don't know if that's less, it just keeps the cars contained without having to lay railroad tie, you know, or yeah. you know, right. logs all the way around. And, yeah. 
An idea that I had, because I was talking to some other people at City Hall, was I know they're doing the free trees right now. Yeah. Um, and they said they'll put any on city property. Um, since it is city property, I was thinking maybe we could use that to go along the property lines. It's kind of, Don't you know, just, the yeah, to help bit. instead of putting a fence down, we can have trees up so people obviously can't drive through a tree unless you're really having a hard time, so. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> So I figured that you know that give some of the homeowners on either side a little more privacy, as well as it'll add a nice, yeah. lovely vegetated so area. Have you been there? Is like there enough space? You can sometimes put a couple yeah. of trees. That they like the, I don't know if you've seen the trees. They're like little baby trees, but they'll you grow. Know, I, know, um, but I have to call them obviously, but I wanted to see how the commission felt about that. It's just an idea. That would be my concern, just the type of species, because you know. Get this big tree camp be going out. You're gonna use a lot of your usable mm -hmm. area. Right. Yeah. What well, I was thinking, that true. But I was also thinking that it would help. Cause I know they did mention there's a lot of drainage issues there. That would maybe help with a little bit of that. I, I wouldn't think so. No. But, no. Yeah. I mean, I I don't think any of us would be against that. It'd just be as long as it's the right species and placed. You know, it's kind of like. When I plant bushes at my house, my wife yells at me, why is it so far away? Because it's this big and it's going to grow to this big and I don't want it in my living room, you know? So, kind of what like Mr. Stone's talking about. I'll give so. them a call and see tomorrow and see what yeah. we can do. Mm -hmm. what, is, um, what is going to be our plan for signage? So, I did talk to um, Ms. Sumner with the Park and Rack on what they did for the Lumser, other Lumser Trail signs, since I think it'd be nice for them all to look the similar. Mm -hmm. um, there's a company in town, Add a Sign. Um, they did the sign for them. Um, Mr. O'Brien had built the actual wooden, wooden kiosk. Um, but they said they could do that as well for us um, if we didn't have any to build it. But just for the sign right here would be anywhere from $400 to $700 for them to do. And then um, if we wanted to do the kiosk, that would obviously add some price. Can we use wetlands funds for that? No, 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 no. no. But what do we have for other budget items? I don't know. I didn't get a budget tonight, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's some funds there. I just couldn't. I, I'll talk most most right. commissions have a line item for maintenance. You yeah. know, so if, if it's. I don't believe that we have. Yeah, I, I don't remember. Okay. There's also, I mean, the Boy Scouts. You know, they do um, eagle projects and stuff. We might be able to at least. They raise some money towards it, you know, or at least build a kiosk or something. Right. Okay. So, we have budget so they built this, uh, I'm not they built. This is a Lemister Rex sign up on Elm Street, you said? Yes. O'Brien built that? Um, O'Brien built, built, built the frame right. for it, um, and then they added the add a sign to it. Maybe we could reach out to him to see what kind of funding he used. Yeah, volunteer yeah, there's all volunteer oh, yeah. so the whole group is. But somebody had to buy the materials. Yeah, I don't know what the trail stewards yeah. come up with, but um, it's a nice looking kiosk. I think I like the way they did the uh, they show the blazes. So you can actually mm -hmm. someone going out there knows. I mean, I guess yeah. to some people it's obvious. Just follow like the, the blue blaze or whatever. But you know, not everybody is you know. Yeah. Um, and on the second page, what they have there for hunting on that land, um, hunting birds that they have there, I figured, as you know, we didn't have the same thing going throughout the city. So oh, that's no. common knowledge. And I figured I did add in um, just because of I know some of the concerns in the area. You know, we could put in the verbiage from the law, you know, no loaded weapons within 500 feet of homes. Do we like they have a map? Um, I personally don't like to see the whole city yeah i'd yes. like to see more of the area i do have um from mr rich powers he did send me from the last time he went i can't bear he had a gps tracker and he tracked uh he tracked out the area um i had to buy a new adobe pro and i was not able to open it <laughs> <So> <laughs> okay I'm waiting for adobe to receive my check so i can get my license and open it. well i think i think if it shows you know it doesn't need to be just that one parcel but but yeah. it shows like the map it shows yeah. the reservoir, it shows where the trail goes, um, right. and it shows that that specific right. area. And we can show, you know, especially with hunting, we definitely want to show residential. Yeah, we can separate. Uh, in kind of a 500 foot, you know, even even 
to be safe, you know, it's a 550 foot kind of park to say there's absolutely no hunting within this zone, like, you know. Yeah. Um, well, the map of limits show that might be tough, that's why I... Could we use that, utilize that secondary kiosk that we already have? Well, as a, as a maybe a, like a secondary map source. You, you could, yeah, you could definitely do that. I mean, I mean, I would, I, I think what would look nice if we had, you know, this big sign with kind of all the do's and don'ts like they do, have maybe directly underneath it that other Mass Commonwealth sign, and then the kiosk kind of next to it. So I it's all together. I thought that would. Yeah. And then what we put where, I don't. I'm an engineer, I'm not a look person. So I don't know what looks nice and what doesn't yeah. look nice, so. No, but I think being, you know, consistent with what the city's already doing is going to be, it just kind of, you know, we're trying to unify the trails in the city. I know they right. get a lot of grant money to, you know, bring, you know, have as much of the city connected through trails as possible, being connected to other communities, they, you know, things like that. So right. if we have a common signage across it, people that, are utilizing the land it's not like they're seeing something different so kind of have that. like this sign but then in our kiosk say this is this land yeah is that what you're saying like well that? no but i mean just i like the you know protect our drinking water the do's and don'ts you know oh, yeah. you know indicating you know how to find your way like just i think they've covered the bases of all the basic things that we need to do to, to you know right to address you know for the property and you know i, I think if we can get the land trust to, uh, I mean, the uh, trail stewards to, you know, you know, help modify this, you know, maybe with like what you're talking about also, but overlay the the proposed, you know, uh, trail that they're talking about. Yeah, yeah. That yeah, little yeah. loop trail or whatever. Okay. So yeah. Maybe. And from what I remember, the area where the kiosk is now, the empty kiosk. Yeah. Wouldn't we have to move that back to the back side of the proposed parking area because if people park they're not going to get out of their cars and walk towards the street to read a kiosk and then turn around and walk back through a parking lot they should be able to disembark from their car and as they're walking right at the trail that, that yeah. trailhead yes that's where that yeah. should be yes, so yes, they, yes, yes like right in their face isn't that wooden because there's a sign there too right yeah, yeah. isn't there's that a wooden sign that is. Uh, you could you could park in front of it. Yeah. I think <laughs> leaving. I think putting it there might be the best idea. So we don't have to move the giant granite and readjust everything. Maybe somewhere in that front area. Right. You know, I know moving a simple post is easy, but like no, that that would be important. I definitely would want, want in the back. Trail yeah, I would want to buy that before they get in. Right. Yeah. So yeah, we could we could put a kiosk move the kiosk back to the trailhead and leave this stuff up front. Yeah. You could do that. Yeah, something to say like, hey, the, the entrance is here. Yeah. Because if we do start lining with trees and everything, it could get a little, a little lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should be right. You know, because somebody would say, I didn't see it. I drove in, I knew it was here, but I didn't walk see back it. to read what it had to say. No, there definitely should be something at the trailhead. Okay. Yeah. Um, It was, so I guess on the sign, I mean, right here, it has protect men drinking water, do's and don'ts, finding your way, hunting. Um, what think the hunting you would want more at the trailhead? Well, would this whole yes. thing be at the trailhead? Well, I guess that's the question. Would well, you have like- At the last meeting, we talked about consolidating the sign, because we don't have a sign that's all over the place. Right. Let's have it in one spot where it makes the most sense. Because if you have the parking, if you're gonna, if you have like this, say, rec just if this was yeah. a, a rectangular parking lot, and the, the trail's kind of coming up, if, if, the tra if this is the parking area, and the, the trailhead is like right here, you want, you just put the, um, put the sign right, right, right front and center of the parking area and the trailhead, right. and then everybody sees it. Right. I don't know. Yeah, it just would like if this wooden sign was like closer to the road, it wouldn't even be an issue. I mean, the parking doesn't have to be 
so far back. I don't know. No, I would imagine the parking would be right the if a parking park. spot's 20 feet deep, you want to be a few feet off the road, probably 30 feet off the road. Yeah. It'd be the front of the cars. Mm -hmm. And then the signs would be in front of that. So you'll see the kiosk from the road, you'll see the kiosk right. as you park, and you'll see this kiosk as you right. are entering the woods. So I think everything could be on that kiosk, and there's no way that you could miss it. Right. Because you can't. You see it driving by, you see it driving in, you see it after you park. Okay. That should be the plan. So what's going to be on the sign? I think what the city's already doing, I think, is a we should stay consistent with yeah. other signs. So have this sign, and then on the kiosk put site-specific stuff? Oh, actually, well, we could, yeah. I mean, right now, this seems to have, I think, a bulk of what we need. I wonder if that's the kiosk. I don't know. Maybe we don't need that kiosk. Maybe that kiosk can be. Okay. I mean, I'm just looking at, the more I look at the sign, it really, it says everything that we need it to say. So just change the map to what we want the map to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Customize it for, yeah. For this property. You also talked about for dog droppings. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, like one of those little yeah. Yeah. Right? And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I, I thought even putting like this Massachusetts sign like right here. I love that one. Yeah, right here, boom. So it's yeah. not scattered out, it's just kind of like so, the whole thing is right one spot. Okay. Um, is there a way that we could get a copy of this? Like a the, like like actual a, like a brochure. Like a brochure type example of what what the sign looks like, the template that the city uses? What whatever um sign company that you use, typically they'll, they'll create that image and send it right to you. Yeah, so okay. whatever you want on it, I mean, we, we can work with somebody on that and they'll, right. they'll usually get it to you that day. Here's right. what it looks like. Because they, they, they want it approved yeah. before you yeah. order it. So yeah. Oh, okay. The guy, yeah. the gentleman I spoke to said I just had to give him a call or stop by the office right. and talk to him about yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much that have it already shouldn't know. be too much work. Yeah. Because okay. I'm thinking it might be nice to have something that you could show to the camera rather than us looking at this at some point we could have a no that's fine something that you would get okay if you put your color in up on that point could the camera zoom out i doubt it <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's kind of small. Small. i don't know it's like white to yes, so. um, oh what is the point for it metal or that's what special type of ivory it's, it's very difficult for weather. It's like a resin. Like a, yeah, I go with the resin. I don't know if that works, but how good is that TV camera? <laughs> <laughs> HD. Super high def. Um, the only other thing that we did want, and I think it's because of the grant and because of that rocks there, we definitely want to add some history to, to Oh, yeah. Right. Whether it's yeah, on that kiosk or added onto the right. side. I would almost not mess with this sign. I think it's no. I now that we talk about it, it's really a pretty decent sign. Yeah, you know. I but feel like the history I could put in the secondary kiosk there. If you guys like it's for some you know, people who are interested well, in stop by. Anyways, right? Yeah, it's right there. Like within three feet of each other, at least. Because right. I mean, what we talked about a couple meetings ago, trail map, which this has, hunting rules, this has. This even has do's and don'ts, talks about drinking water. The only thing that would be missing is basically the history. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then the dog thing, we said that was going to be separate. Did you say the rec department has? Dog kind of, waste signs. Well, they have something, don't they? Yeah, we, I, I, I have some dog waste signs. Um, yeah, so, you know, pick up after your dog. And we had discussed he, at the meeting not having the actual um, dispenser and trash there. Um, but just having a sign up here, a reminder to pick up after your dog is very okay. easy to get our hands on. I mean, on. that's a simple little sign we can stick right at the trailhead and, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But we have the little dog kind of already, so we don't really need to, to we don't really need to include it in our main sign to keep this more uniform, so. And obviously hunting has been a big issue. Um, on their sign, it says, hunting is allowed on city watershed lands. Wear blaze orange clothing and stay on marked trails during hunting season. 
and hunting is prohibited on Sundays. And then you added, but I, it's hard for me to read because it's black and black. It says no weapons. Basically, no weapons right, so we can add um, the 500 foot, maybe even, you know, no, loaded, no loading of weapons until outside that 500 foot, you know, which is the law, but we can definitely specify that on the sign. You know, adding one or two lines is another. Right. You know, um, as long as there's space, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Space shy. yeah it should be. Um, yeah. So I have to post that as well. Okay. This sign um, this has a QR code on it. Did you access that to see what it brings up? Um, I did not. My city oh. phone is not, not that high tech. It does not really work when I do that. Really? <laughs> yeah. Kind of a phone is. <laughs> I can't shoot it off of this. It's too small. Um, okay. I know all the trail maps are online as PDFs, but we yeah. don't have a map of this site, do we? Like no, we sensors? just have not. I have a PDF on from um, Mr. We just Powers have something like this. But I have one that Mr. Powers had sent me that actually has like where the trail is. Where the trail is on the yeah. property. So I have the property lines. Yep, it shows like the, the property lines. I'm um, just and like it would show up in GIS and then, and then the, the trail. trail maps there. Okay. Um, comments, questions? I was thinking of, on that 500 foot radius for the hunting. If we had a city map or even the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife maps that had those circles on it the night we were looking at them, if we could have that on the conservation website, with a URL, we could have a, a QR code right on the sign, can. and they could shoot it and have it right on their phone. You can. Well, I think the map, if we have a map out there, we could definitely include it right on the map as well. Yep. Yeah. Pretty easy, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know the that. website itself doesn't say, but I think that's what happens when you shoot the key with the code. I would imagine, though. Yeah. It just brings up the URL. Yeah. You're too high tech for me. That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Any fifth grader can handle that one. Well, uh, that's not me. I'm not that smart. That's all we have to do, though. I was thinking. They're not to chair meetings like you. You said there's like landmarks out there. Like it'd be cool if they had tags with a QR code on it too. Well, the the when the land when the the trail stewards put up the trails, they they put markers with numbers on them. You know, they, you, so if you're looking at the map, you can see where you, you know. Oh, no, I know. I'm just saying, like, it would be cool, like, if you shot it, and then, like, it gives you, like, a, this is what. Yeah. Is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you could go really high tech. Well. I think Liz just volunteered to go out and map this all out. These <laughs> were all things. So. Um, in regards to the trail, um, in an email Mr. Ryan had sent me, he did mention that he does work for a firm um, that he would love to give us a quote for him to go out and do the trail for us. Um, as I forward the email along to you, so I just wanted to let everyone know that yeah. as well. If that's if something we're interested in, I can check and see what, what the price would be. We'd be happy to look at his quote. So. So, all right. I might get lost. Um, any other discussion? When would we like to? I know this is going to take us a little bit of time. This fall, spring, tomorrow, yesterday. Yeah, can we get a map? I mean, I think that the the, the biggest part of this sign is is getting some sort of parts or a customized map um, because I I mean I don't think once it's printed I mean. You're paying another five hundred dollars to print it again. Right. So right. we kind of have to get it right the first time. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Yep. We'll have to do that. We'll also have to figure out um, exactly where the funding is going to come to pay for the map as well. Yeah, we will get the budget and see if there's any line items in there. For what didn't we do before for like computers, and cameras? Well, and some stuff you can use wetland fund for. Because okay. yeah, that's for the administration for, of the wetlands. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. So that's what we, yeah. cameras and we use yeah. it for that. Okay. But yeah, in this case, it, because it's not really. I do know that we have a contractor, you know, a contractor line item, um, which typically 
I don't think I'm looking through. I haven't seen that. We really used that in the past. That I can see if we can maybe use that line item for it. Okay. But the funds are limited, and we have to also think about if there's any trees that need to be cut down off conservation land in the future. Any other work needs to be done, so that's all come out of the same. The city. Small used pool. To. Whenever we had this in the past, the city has a tree department. The tree, yeah. the tree department charges us to cut they down the trees. Forestry. Um, I did see some invoices in the past for when I think for when the tree department couldn't because you know the DPW is only so many people that sometimes yeah. we need something done if there's an emergency where a conservation tree lands on a house or something that we have to handle it as soon as possible. But it's not it's city owned land. It's not just because it falls under the protection of or under the title of conservation land. It's all owned by the city of Lemonster. That's just how it was explained to me when it was. Okay. It's typically who the land's deeded to, and that's where there's a little bit of a gray area here. Like, and I, I know some <laughs> things like the Lassie Lead Field to me coming in, I'm confused as to why we're calling that conservation <laughs> land versus something else that's that's purchased or or gifted for conservation purposes, and it's true Article 97, and the commission does have control over that through yeah. the deed. So that's. Because we have land that is in the watershed that really was, was purchased to protect the watershed that they put under conservation, which made no sense because it, it ultimately it should have been, you know, because they have a whole land that's presided for watershed protection, which is managed by the DPW. I'm so, not saying the DPW wouldn't do the tree cutting for us, yeah. but it's no, 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 I know. kind of. I just, that's why, but I, it's just, I, 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 some of the stuff, you know. We don't want to use our money if we don't have to use our money for a yeah, tree cutting. Don't so yeah. have a forestry money. <laughs> okay. So Angela, can you? Um, it sounds like you're kind of already down the path with the map and the trails and. Yeah, I have all that, but I just need to locate the funding. Okay. We'll look at the budget and we'll figure that out. And then we'll get the quote from Mr. O'Brien as well. Okay. Yeah, we can definitely talk about, you know, with the Boy Scouts and maybe we can have the Lion's Den of Pack 16 build a kiosk for us, but you might be a little young. But no, I mean, we could definitely have, you know, Boy Scouts and, and stuff do some little work. Um, the vocational school, too, they do some, they do really nice work. Oh, yeah. yeah. I know they do a lot. They build houses and stuff, so I don't know how busy they are, but I'm sure they have kids that aren't building houses. That right. I mean, this is a couple hour project. Yeah. Okay. So I think we'll use this as our template and we'll fill in the blanks of what we think needs to be added, but I think this is a, definitely a good start. Um, but yeah, if you could get from the sign company, like what the sign is, like nice color so we can, do you know what I mean? I'll see what I can do. Instead of a picture, of, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'll give them a um, call tomorrow and see what I can do. Yeah. But it sounds like it's got pretty much a lot of the stuff that we have on our side, so. Okay. And the dog waste will be separate. And the history we might put on the other kiosk. Once this is in place, if we do move the other sign, is the no parking sign still there? Um, it is. I did talk to the DPW. They can move it um, away from the parking area and so move it down the road slightly. Okay. So it's not on our on the parking area. Property. And then once once this is in place, then we'll take down the other no hunting signs and make sure it's in the right spot so it gets viewed we'll by every single thing, and we'll go from there. But. All right. We'll work on you. Anybody in the audience like to speak? I have a question. Yeah. I'm still unclear where the parking is. Is it between the road and the pear trees or on the back side of the pear trees? Um, it's between the road and the pear trees is where I think I'm putting it. So what are you going to do about the swale that we depend on so that the neighbors across the street don't get flooded? So I did talk to the engineer um, from the DPW and he said it wouldn't affect that. It's not going... So if people keep driving in and out and it gets 
Yeah, he said he wasn't concerned. It doesn't affect my family. I'm on the other side of it, but I'm thinking of the people that have gotten flooded across the street and their driveway goes down and the water goes down. I did bring that up concern to him. He said from um, the stormwater engineering standpoint, he doesn't see that as being a problem. I mean, we, we definitely wouldn't want to. We're not going to do anything to. Especially where the swale is, it's a little bit farther need. down from is where it? the park yeah, is I mean, going to be. That's why we wanted the boundary so we can make sure that. It's far enough away from all the neighbors, but also not affecting the site as well. So. Anything else? Yes. I'm Frank Flynn. I'm at 234 Hill Street. Can we discuss a little more the the hunting and the area from the homes? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm of the opinion that somewhere along the line, there's going to be directions that hunting has to be at least 500 feet from the dwellings? That's the, the law. That's the law. That's, that's the law. law. Yeah. That's the law. Okay. Well, uh, is that going to be identified in the must sign? Yes. Because yes. You're, you're all aware that there are two homes that are right there at the entrance area where you're proposing the parking. Mm -hmm. These homes are what, 50 or 60 or 70 feet from the road? Yes. About 50 or 60 feet into the property. Yep. I'm one house down from there. I am 500, more than 500 feet from the road, or I'm more than 500 feet already into the woods. How is that going to affect my home and my family with hunters with my protection? It's, it's 500 feet from your house. So it's we, we do have some map. Map. Um, we do have this is the property and the pink has been outlined for the 500 foot from all residential. This is provided by Mass Wildlife. Um, so they take where all the residences are and they put the 500 foot radius, which is what we are discussing um, right are the, on the side. This is an outline of the homes? It's yeah, the pink. So the thing, oh, that's your home right there, correct? So these, this pink line is you know, the 500 foot radius. So this would be on the sign where the that's parking the area is, so yeah. where everyone would be able to tell um, where it is. But also, you know, hunters, they are responsible for knowing this as well, but we are discussing putting on the sign as well. But that, that m something similar to that is going on this sign to show here's the property and here is the approximate 500 foot. So you folks, in, uh, this is your, your, your area, so you are familiar with this type of posting. What's the history? Will the hunters pay attention to that? I'm concerned. I don't mind the hunting. I just that we've never had a problem with it, and now you're going to be allowing hunting in that location. Hunting is allowed now. I, I mean, this this it's is actually allowed now. This is the sign. Not from that location. Yes. You can't enter through. You can't. Discharge a firearm within so many feet of a dwelling or road. No law to enforce those signs that are there. So technically, any hunter could walk up there with his unloaded weapon as long as he's within the, you know, the state laws. Because right. we have no right. I'm not. You know, we're not mass wildlife. We're not the game warden. We have no way to enforce that. So technically, if you know there was a hunter who knew the laws, they could go up there. And there's really nothing that the police or we could do. So we're just trying to make it as safe as possible. I mean, this sign is on Elm Street, which is the other side of the property, way over on Elm Street. That's another entrance? Um, no, that's not the other entrance. That's on the other side of the road to a different property. Different property, but... It goes into the same woods. No, it doesn't. Oh, this one doesn't go into the same one. Oh, you're telling me. I don't understand. No, this, it's, it, what I'm trying to say is hunters can enter from all over. So it's it's not like already it's, it's barred. They just... Those signs say they can't enter, but we can't enforce it. If a hunter sh parks on that property and walks in, and the police are called, there's no that we you can't stop them from entering there. As long as they don't break a law. As long as they don't actually break the law. If they walk in with an unloaded weapon, they can walk right by those signs, and there's nothing that the commission or the police department can do. Because you're not hunting at, at, the, at the point of that sign. You're not hunting. You're not hunting. You're if you go into, into the, woods. the woods and blaze orange with a unloaded weapon, you have every right as a, you know, a, a right. someone with a firearms identification card or a license to carry to, to do that. Okay, I understand that. So all we're doing is we're trying to show where the trails are, 
show the safe hunting zones with those those the locations of the house with the pink lines that are marked out from Nash, uh, Mass, Wildlife. Mass Wildlife and show an area of the trails and the reservoir. So that way we're showing natural resources, we're showing protected areas, we're showing um, you know trails where people can use right. the, the, the area for passive recreation. We're also putting up you know the safety you know where blaze orange you know please respect you know yes. the uh, reservoir don't start fires don't leave trash pick up after your dog. We're so trying to encompass everything on one side. side at the entrance area. It'll be so if we if 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 you can envision the road where where the, the parking would be. Yeah. It'll be. They'll have to walk past that sign. And it'll be right. Then there'll be a trail going up into the woods. So you have to pass that sign to get there. But that the only sign. You're not putting other signs in the woods. No, no. In the other okay. Um, if homeowners would like signs put on, you can simply like, contact Mass Wildlife, and you can have signs put on your property on your property. Mass line. Wildlife. If you can contact Mass Wildlife, or you can put signs up yourself on your property line. Uh, that would require you know, having a survey done as well. Okay. Yes. Uh, Steve Flynn, 178 Hill. So I guess I'm now totally confused about the use of the land. The last meeting, it was discussed that the no hunting signs were hotly contested and it wasn't going to be an item until moving forward. And now it sounds like we're saying it taking down and allowing people to hunt from that location. So That's correct. I, guess the confusion comes from the point again two other commissions had done the research with the state we have the video clips they so said that they confirmed that so they this have is, the right to this is a different commission and we are stewards of this land and what we're trying to do is make it safe for the neighborhood and making it accessible to the public and this residents of Lemonster so I understand that other commissions have voted to put up certain signs. This commission has decided that we, there's still going to be hunting rules on our sign. We're just not going to have the white signs that say no hunting this entrance. And this is all preliminary. There's no, we haven't done it. Yeah, we haven't right? voted. We're just, just preliminary ideas that we're yeah. discussing. discussion. Well, I, I guess but, are you kind of, yeah, I didn't get the finish of that saying, but the, the concept of it is that we were told on a couple occasions that they do have the right to do that. And then you guys are saying you don't have the right to do that. So I guess that's where my confusion. There is no law that's withstanding right now that can prohibit hunters from entering that. Just the commission put up signs, but there's no enforceable law that if a hunter walks in there with a gun over his shoulder unloaded, and someone says, calls the police, they're going to say, what laws have you broken? I'm walking past a sign. Well, well who put the sign? Concentrate. We, there is no law to, to right. well, kick them off the land at that point. The way it was explained to me by someone who worked in the environmental police department was they can enforce whatever the sign says. So if the way it was explained, if the sign says no hunting this entrance and someone enters for that purpose, they could then enforce it and go back to the person and say, you can't enter from this location, you could enter from the other sides and walk the back side and come in. So that's the way it was explained to me by someone in the environmental police. If I may say. Yes. Um, so that would be completely applicable if there was another entrance to this property. This is the main entrance, this is where the parking area is, the other entrances, they have no parking signs. Um, Unfortunately, if the commission feels that taking the signs down is beneficial and putting having one, the one general sign is, and they go on and they do choose that, that is the choice that the commission makes at that time. Um, in 10 years, they, if there's issues that arise, if there's more houses that are built, the commission has the right to reevaluate that, or if the city passes an ordinance that does not allow hunting on any conservation land, that's another route of some towns and cities do have to take. But typically, if it's watershed land or a land parcel of this size, hunting is allowed. Um, there's no limitations unless for safety reasons, which after speaking to the direct, a director at the Mass Wildlife, um, this site doesn't really qualify in his opinion. Yeah, I, it would kind of be like if, like say you, you took a, and you put a no 
parking sign, like we have one right now that's on in front of conservation land. It's not an enforceable sign because that sign wasn't put there uh, through any city ordinance. There was no decision made. That there's nothing legally binding that makes the, that sign on Hill Street a, a legally binding no parking sign. So if you call the police and said, hey, somebody's parked in front of my house and there's a no parking sign, it's not enforceable. There's nothing that can be done because the sign, it's an arbitrary sign that was put there without any any kind of you know permission or jurisdiction. So it's just a sign, you know. Like basically, we had a, um, an attorney that was in here a month ago that said according to him that if he reads that sign it said no hunting within so many feet of this sign so for me I think that white sign is I, I mean we had multiple interpretations you have one interpretation yeah. we had an attorney Bedanza came in uh, Councilor Bedanza came in and he had a totally different interpretation of that sign so what we're doing is we're taking what the city's already doing across you know across the city and we're just adapting that so that there's continuity and you know this is something that you know um, Judy Sumner has worked very hard you know to get these signs put up and I've never heard a complaint of any any of these signs across the city so I think these signs do a very good job of you know getting the word out there of all the do's and don'ts of the property yeah, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I, I think you probably put yourself in the shoes of the people that, about that, you know, we're not here bucking heads and trying to give you, you know, it's, a, it's purely public safety, and as, you know, I don't know if it's fair to speak on behalf of Mr. Bedanza without him being here, but, you know, public safety is the number and should be the number one concern, and as he mentioned, something, there were problems, a fix was put in place, it's where perfectly for many years, you know, and now we're looking at them doing it, so. We're not, I, mean, I guess we've, we've voiced, you know, well, we could, we'll go back and forth yeah. forever. No, but I just, I don't believe that we're undoing anything. I think we're actually improving the situation. We're, we're, we're putting up signs wow. that, that do the same that's, thing. That's opinion, you know, I mean, we can get into the, 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 the commissions in the past, felt strongly, it's the city council members that felt strong. I mean, when I say everybody and their brother said that was the right thing to do, people came out of the woodwork. I mean, you know, there was some other concerns, some people that have been following this on TV have approached me and, you know, expressed some other concerns, you know, pertaining to this, which again, fit into the public safety. You know, I've talked to some of the you have it hunt, so you know it's it's an opinion, you know. But I don't you know. I think what was done was the right thing. It was done the right way, and it should remain that way. You know, I, I I sometimes feel like you guys feel like this is something that we're just you know throwing out there, and we we're the ones that live up there. We see what happens, what goes on. We live the bad some of the bad experiences in the past. We've seen you know I've offered it a couple times. And, well, my residence. So, yes. Since I think you've already, yeah. we know what you did. I think motion to continue to the rest of the meeting. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Was that? Was that? No, I just made a motion to continue to the rest of the meeting. We do have engineers that are yeah. here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's fine. So, yeah, Angela, if you can. Get our map. Yeah. We'll continue that going. So. All right. And you were here for which? Pierce Street. Pierce Street. All right. We'll move that. That was my next one to go to. So you are for certificate of compliance, five sixty-seven Pierce Street. Yes. All right, sir. We uh, submitted the form A. I brought some larger plans for the uh, work was done in conformance uh, with the original design. Okay. Moved the house of hair. Uh, took a little wiggle out of the driveway, but other than that, 
It's all done out there. Uh, now, minus the grass growing on the leach field. <laughs> Angela, you mentioned you obviously visited the site. I did. Um, I also wanted to add that I did receive a complaint from DEP um, about this site, which I did discuss with the contractor. Um, it looks like the silk fencing and hay bales have been breached. Um, I have a copy of the complaint right here. I'm not going to read it aloud because there is some opinions of some of the um, people who are living there, I suppose. Okay. Um, but the wetlands barrier, hay, hay and plastic has been breached. The dirt driveway is washed into Easter Brook, and this is DEP number 199-1062. I did go out there and investigate. I did see that you know, it did breach. Um, so I did contact Mr. Van Dyke, let him know it was, it was about a couple wheelbarrows worth. I told him you know, he'd go in there by hand and remove the silt, and then adjust and put in some more hay bales. When his, um, the men he had working for him had gone out there, they actually found a wheelbarrow in the brook and so they removed that thinking that that was what he had meant I suppose okay. so, so what he had done um, so he's going to try and get an excavator out there to remove the silt um, he you can see in the images he had put down hay added more hay bales to stabilize the area to prevent any of it from rinsing out and he removed um, by hand some of the stuff that had been right on the bank okay um, and they do have a closing coming up in a couple weeks, he did inform me. Um, he's hoping as soon as that national national grid is going to let him know when he's it's national grid track, that's going to be putting in the ground line. And that's when they're going to have the excavator out there. Like, get out of the nowhere. Oh, okay. So, um, and that's when he was planning on removing the silt. Just a comment. It doesn't look like, I mean, the grass hasn't taken yet, which is within the resource area, right? Or is it? Yeah, some of it's in the hundred foot buffer. Yeah, so I mean, typically we don't we wait till the site's stable before we issue a certificate of compliance. Don't don't you issue uh, you don't issue partials on? Uh, I mean, it's not going to get good growth in there. Well, I don't know. I guess it's, you could you could get decent growth maybe late fall, but definitely the spring. I did discuss that with the commission. In my experience, typically likes the work to you know, be completed as per the conditions, um, as well as that the silt really should be removed. Um, but I did tell him I would let you guys know he does have a closing date coming up and he does plan on removing it. Um, it's been a tough site for them. Now, did you say too far? You don't you don't have growth over the septic system? Not yet, no. So you don't even have a certificate for that yet, right? No, I'm turning the plans in tonight, but typically they'll you know they'll issue occupancy, but they still require and will demand, you know, grass growth on the system. They'll issue the occupancy before that happens yet? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the Board of Health will will clear it anyways. Oh, okay, that's... In the past, uh, we've had, we've run into issues where we've issued either, uh, you know, a partial or anything like that, and then the place just turns into a disaster. You know what I mean? If we, like, if we, I mean, right now, you know, having it, the site not completely stable, I, I you know, especially with material getting into the resource yeah, area. Yeah, that's, that's all news to me. That time. No, no one told me about that. I, yeah, I definitely would be hesitant. Just because of the neighborhood, the issues with the, because there's a house adjacent to it in the neighborhood and yeah. the issues with that, I would definitely like to see it vegetated before a COC's, especially if it's been seen it's been breached and so that hasn't been cleaned yet. Not yet. He did stabilize it so it could further go right. in, um, but he has a copy of the complaint. I, Thought he would discuss it with you. Yeah, you can do that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, that would be my thought at this point. I don't know if the DEP. The DEP did not does not collect that information. I did not oh, pass that on to me to notify them. Probably one of the authorities. That's right. It was like an online complaint form. Yeah. They haven't been telling me who's the complaint. Online complaint form. Yeah. Um, CSC Brown as well. Okay. My thought is to not issue a certificate of compliance. That's my thought. It's up to the commission. 
I agree with that. Okay. Angela, if you could follow up with the homeowner contractor and just notify us when there's growth and the, I think when the stuff's clean, especially when it's out of the resource area, and then we can address it at that point. I will let him know. Okay. Thank you for waiting. Sure. Extension permits. Um, we do have one extension permit for a property over on Exchange Street. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to abstain from any motions or voting on this extension permit as the property is owned by me. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, right there's now. the vote. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, do, do we have that file, Angela? Yeah. I do. I'm just pulling it right now. Oh, boy. Can Paul speak about it? Absolutely. He's very knowledgeable right. about it. <laughs> Mr. Colombo, what would you like the extension for? Um, you're probably aware of the property. We, we purchased this property in January of 2013, and it had a current order of conditions that was, I believe, one year old. And in 2015, that we requested an extension of that order because we had not done any construction on the property nor had we decided to do any as with the submitted plan. Um, that extension permit was granted, and now here we are in 2018, three more years down the road. We still have not decided to build or sell the property, and in order to keep its property value, what we're asking for is to extend the current order of conditions um, again. Okay. What are the order of conditions for? The, the order of conditions include the construction of a driveway, a four-bedroom home, a swimming pool, a dock installed on the existing pond, and a um, small garden area uh, adjacent to Exchange Street near the uh, outfall of the pond itself. Okay. And as of right now, nothing has been done? No work has been done on the site other than just maintaining uh, vegetation. Um, and as I mentioned, we don't have any current plans to construct on that site as of today. Um, if we were to construct on that site, we would certainly come back to the commission, review whatever it is we were going to do. My own personal opinion is there would be no dock, there would be no swimming pool, so we would be coming back with a different plan much more environmentally friendly plan than what was approved by the commission prior to us buying the property. Okay. So the order was issued under the owners that you bought it from? Yes. Okay. Do we have the planning for um, I did not find one on the computer. I was looking through the files. I do have a copy of it here somewhere. Person asked for the extension should be more prepared. to the pond or whatever that body of water is, is existing disturbed area, would it? 
Um, if you go back to the construction of the pond itself, that was done prior to wetlands protection. That pond was constructed for irrigation of the Pheasant Run Golf Course, which okay. is now Commonwealth Circle, and um, a partial snowmaking facility for Pheasant Run Ski Area. So the pond was constructed, and some of the existing wetlands were filled. So it's referred to as the existing disturbed area on any of the engineered sites. Okay. That was done sometime in the early 70s. So that's what's commented as disturbed area. That's, right. yeah, that's what they call it, the disturbed area. It's basically an open um, meadow, that's what it is. And it floods. I mean, it's very obvious that it's, it's a wetland area. And the, um, all the wetland flags have long since disappeared. Um, but it's clearly marked as to where the, um, the bordering vegetated wetland area is. Okay. And this one has been extended once, but the I'm a little confused here. So the why do we have two separate notice notices of intent dates on the order of condition? I believe the order that I extended was an amended order of conditions, but I. That was before we had the questions, so I'm not sure. Do you have the, the file with you? Or? I don't have the file with me. I can simply... There's a lot of files just labeled Exchange Street. <laughs> <laughs> it's a busy area. Yeah. Um, I'm looking to see if I have a copy of that. That's an extension. Yeah, I'm just trying to get through the whole history here. In the order of conditions, um, only lists buffer zone impacts, but the plans show on resource area impacts. I'll pass that over to Fred. That's a printout that was given to me when we purchased the property, which gives the history of what had taken place as far as permits, NOIs. We don't have a copy of the 2000 NOI anywhere? Not that I've been able to locate yet. Um, I did call over DPW to see if they had any other files, possibly in their basement. They said they'd keep an eye out. Superseding order of conditions? No, is that an error or is this actually a superseding order of conditions somewhere? I wasn't, I didn't see it. So. It, says, it says amended order issued in December 11th, 2012, and then it says a request for a superseding order. On December 20th, 2012. 
That was my request. You requested a superseding order? What was, what was the department's response? Before they had issued it, I purchased a property and I withdrew the request. Okay. So I no, no superseding order was issued for this no, site? No. I came down and I asked at the time, it was Joanne Canaro, I asked her to give me all of the obligate species that the data that was collected for the notice of intent. I also asked for the special conditions for chlorination because of pool being proposed. And nothing. There was nothing in the order. So I contacted DEP and paid the hundred dollar fee and asked for superseding order conditions. Before that order came out, um, we negotiated a deal to buy the property and stop the development. And we've sat on that property and kept it as open space, privately owned. And all we're asking now is to extend the original permit. And as I mentioned earlier, if we were to do any construction at all on the site, the pool would be gone, the dock would be gone, and a much more environmentally friendly construction project would be proposed. But because the order's running out, I didn't want it to lapse. And the expiration is December? I believe it would be December 2018. December 11th, yep. Okay. There's also a riverfront zone that's on there. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what we were looking at. 100 and yeah. 200 foot. The outfall for the pond is not on our parcel. That's part of, I believe it's lot 11, which is a conservation, again, privately owned conservation piece. Uh, that everybody on Commonwealth and Constitution pays for. Mm -hmm. I've walked this property in the past. There we go. With, with, probably without the property owner's permission. <laughs> <laughs> now, now that I know that it's Paul, <laughs> he'll be there tomorrow making holes. <laughs> If it's any consolation, it was for the for the children of Commonwealth Circle. <laughs> so now you got one trespass. There you go. There are signs. <laughs> Not back then. <laughs> Maybe you didn't know it at that point. Um, yeah, I, I mean, in, intuitively, I don't think there's going to be any issue here extending it. I just wanted to make sure that we had. We had everything correct in the order in terms of um, what actual resource areas were being altered and to what extent, so that you know whoever does ultimately build this has the right on record. That's why I was looking to see if we had a copy of the NOI, because um, usually those numbers are there. I mean, it's conceivably some of those were forgotten to put in the order in terms of what the impacts were. I don't have that with me, but I know I have it electronically. I think I sent that with the request right. for the extension plan. With the actual in the way. Hold on. Form 5. I'm 
Who says I'm not efficient? A little disorganized tonight. But this this is the order. That's not the NOI. Oh, you want the yeah the, the NOI. I don't have that. Yeah. I don't have that. Okay. I can try and track it down. I know it came through Whitman and Bingham. We have a sense of all of all things that they were worked on. So. I'm just going to do a quick look and see. No, I don't have it. signatures on that. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> you remember working on it? I think Larry has this on here. Larry has on there too. <laughs> it's on it. It's before my time. Yep, Scott Pearson, Larry, you. So I guess for my end, I would just like to see if we can get the rest of the history on it. Okay. Um, just if we need uh, procedurally, what could you do? Um, I guess like a corrected type order, along with the extension, if if we can get the riverfront fees down there. Because th I mean, those existed on the plan, so they should have existed in the NOI, and they should have been in the order of conditions. They're clearly not in the order of conditions, but they are in the plan. And we have one document here which sheds some light on that. It's like an attorney who holds out information. <laughs> no, it's just. <laughs> You're looking for the actual NOA? Yeah, the NOA that should show the riverfront alterations. Um, and I don't think there's going to be an issue with it. I mean, intuitively, it looks like right. the disturbance. The lot, the lot I'm presuming was created pre rivers bill. Do you know when the lot was created? What year? I don't. Okay. I mean, it's been there a long time. So it's Our house was built in 96. Right. 
I think I think those were all created before then. Right. I know I staked out one of the homes down there too, right around that time. I think once they closed Pheasant Run down, it wasn't that long before the property was sold and the lots were all created back then. So I'm going to say 85 would be a good guesstimate. That's still mostly open field right now, right at the uh, the bend to the end on Exchange Street, where the proposed driveway is. Um, yeah. 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 There's a small uh, wildflower meadow with a, an antique hay rake that's parked there. And it's all open. the numbers it'd be nice to have them on the order but looking at the plan I think it complies with the various bill requirements of the act so. well any other comments or questions do you want to wait or would you like to make a motion or? I mean, if, if there's if there's no sense of urgency if it expires in September and if, if we could wait two weeks, I mean, we'd cross our eyes and our T's with everything. Do you have a problem waiting? No, that's... Uh, okay. I just didn't want to wait too long and, you know, okay. not be able to get it resumed. Just find the NOI if you can. Yeah, I'll try and keep going through the tiles. Make sure that that gets put at the very end of each other next time. <laughs> He's here anyways. I have a lot of electronic <laughs> files. When you purchase the property, it's a possibility I might have that electronic. Well, no. That's fine. I don't have a problem waiting if property on it does not. Okay. All right, we'll move on. Minutes from August 14th. Does anybody have <coughs> a chance to review them? Have. Any comments or questions? If nothing, do I have a motion to accept um, that? Oh, on. I had something. Oh, it's all right. Um, I don't have the agenda item in front of me, but when we were discussing um, the catch basin over at the gardener's spot, yep. um, the minutes refer, when I read, uh, the 310 CMR regulation, the minutes refer to 310 CMR 102004B1, and that's not correct. It should be 310 CMR 10.04B1. Okay. That's the only thing I saw. I, I caught that after I sent it as well. If I regret it again, I did notice that. You see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I said these minutes. That's the only thing I saw. Okay with the rest of them. I have a motion to accept them with Paul's adjustment. I make a motion to accept the August 14th, 2018 uh, meeting minutes with the uh, addition, the correction of the uh, that Paul. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Thank you. Old business, Manus Knock Brooks, still in grant writing stage? Um, yes. Currently, um, when he has the grant writing, she's on vacation right now, so when she gets back, I'm going to try and snag an update from her. Okay, perfect. Uh, 723 Willard Street, Hannigan Engineering, uh, did send an email. And did you share that with the entire commission? Uh, I believe I did forward it to everyone, uh -huh. um, but I'll read it as well. Um, from William D. Hannigan from Hannigan Engineering. Angela, per our discussion, we are working with Mr. Dandini regarding a plan and schedule to remove the encroachments on the parcel of land behind the, his house. 
We have done some additional survey and we are trying to work with a couple contractors to see if the shed can be moved, moved without dismantling it. This would require a crane and he is now seeking to see if that would work. If not, he would need to dismantle the shed and rebuild it in another location. With respect to the schedule, we would need to prepare the location for the shed relocation ahead of actually relocating it since there is limited access to the rear of the site. It may be that the concrete court is removed first, then the shed, then the slab for the shed. The fencing will be removed at the end of the project um, and placed along the back of the property line. As discussed in the last meeting with the commission, we will provide updates on the progress and keep you informed. Thank you for your continued cooperation in this matter. We sincerely, Bill um, William D. Hannigan, PE, President of Hannigan Engineering. All right. We've had no further comment uh, communications with him on this. Um, I did discuss with them briefly some issues that they were having. Um, they're just trying to get a hold of an electrician because there is electrical that goes out there. Um, so they're trying to find an electrician, um, which Mr. Dandy does have connections in the field. So they have enlisted a few different contractors to do the work. Okay. There's no plan to restore them? They made no mention of it. Yeah. He, when I on our phone conversation that he referenced, and we did discuss that that was obviously the last step. He first ran out there, kind of um, trying okay. to figure out the logistics because moving the shed okay. with you know following you know different so zoning requirements. Yeah. yeah, they do know they need to do the um, restoration, restoration, <laughs> like rehabilitation, <laughs> restoration. They do know that they have to do that. All right. I guess my other question to the commission is, is how are we going to make sure this keeps moving along? I mean, if the shed is something that needs to, like, I mean, I don't see why everything has to be held up because of a shed. I think the proposal to start removing things right away is probably right. a good I mean, idea. If you're going to have equipment to start, I mean, he mentioned right in the email to, you know, the court and stuff's going to have to probably be removed first. Right. While they have equipment, I'm assuming they could be doing their pad wherever he's going to move the shed to his property. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. I think this is kind of in the process of trying to figure out how the best way to go about yeah. this. Okay. Um, without obviously destroying, causing any damage to the yard or anything. So, is there any, um, I mean, I don't know how any of this works as far as the building, but I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's like permits and zone, like building, I mean. Can you just can you just plop a shed? I mean, the shed in the city of Lemonster. Uh, this again, I don't know. This is from a few years ago. Um, I don't know the size of the shed, but they do have certain regulations on the building department. Building code, yeah. So he may need to there's, get a permit before exactly. he can even move the shed. There's even a if he wanted to move it today. Setback, right? There's a setback. He has to meet. Um, if it has electrical, he's always yeah. going to have to get an electrical permit. But I mean, like, there's, if he's going to put it on a concrete slab, I mean. You don't need a building for uh, you might yeah. actually have to build it. You may have to, but, um, you know, that process is quick. But it's quick. Like, okay. it's yeah. So it's not, it's like a one no, day it's, it's just, yeah, one or two days okay. to get a permit. So none of that's going to hold up the process. No, and that's that's what I'm saying. Like, okay. it's, I think just kind of finding the people to do it right now is hard. Right. It's a challenge. I would just highly recommend to them that it get done prior to snow. Okay. The entire project. I mean, I've. I feel confident that it will, just from our, my conversation with them, that they're kind of, they just kind of want this to be over with. Well, I definitely appreciate the cooperation at this point. I mean, I, it's right. unfortunate it got to this point, but. Right. So, if you could just, I guess, kind of, we'll, we'll keep it on the agenda, okay. just if you can get some updates once a week, every yeah. couple weeks, just to say, you know, if it stalls, then, you know. Yeah, they we can talk about it, but you know, very open. You give me updates and discuss it with me as much as needed. So they've okay. been very open. Okay. All right. Anything else? Question this. Do you have anything to comment or question? Okay. Ninety six. We good? Okay. Ninety six exchange uh, on hold until wetlands are delineated. We still wait. Yep, so I did talk to Mr. Oldfield and I let him know that anyway, as it is part of the order, he does need to have the what was delayed. He was going to let Mr. Zaras know and get Mr. Marr out there. Um, I told you, told, I've been driving by every day. There's been no further work as far as I can tell. I'm sure Paul. 
Eagle Eye, I'm sure, watches it. I haven't seen it. Okay. Um, so I think right now they're just waiting on that and getting that done. Okay. Um, did I skip anything? Communications? Yes. Um, so I did receive an NOI today for 320 Industrial Road. That'll be coming up at the next meeting. It'll be receiving the plans. I also received information from MACC's fall conference. Um, it'll be on October 20th, which is a Saturday. Um, here's a copy of the agenda. It'll have lots of different fun informational classes as well as um, networking and social hour cash bar afterwards. If anyone's interested in going, um, the city does provide for the commission members to go if they'd like to go. Just let me know. I, I, think, I think we can use wetland funds for training the cash bar. Well, <laughs> <laughs> That's we'll get to that <laughs> one in a minute, but. <laughs> that is not what if anybody would like to go, yeah, I know <laughs> in the past. But for the actual tickets to go, the city will. The city's we do have paid funding for that. And or we've talked about what lands one that they can be used. So. Yeah, there is a line item in the budget. For is there for that? Okay. Yeah, I do. Have. Cash bar. That is, that is out of your own personal pocket. We'll add that next year. We'll put it. We'll, put it, <laughs> we'll get it on the budget. <laughs> we'll get it on the budget. I'll let John know. <laughs> can you um, just scan and email that to yeah, us so we don't have it? Perfect. Any other communications? Okay. Uh, emergency certs. All right. Project updates from Angela and or any other commission members. The only thing I had a question on was going through my stuff is uh, whatever that road is off of Bel Air. Ava Road. Yes. So I haven't heard anything from them since the last discussion, but I do know that they've been working with the planning board um, and the, new, the interim planning director, Chris Ryan, they've been working with him on this. Um, I did send him an email this morning to him and they reach out and see if I can get an update on where they were with that. Um, so I'm just waiting for a response. Okay. And that's basically, we're just waiting on, is it pay, finished paving? Or is that what we're I haven't had a chance to drive by, okay. um, but I do know that was like their goal was to kind of pave it and get it. Yeah, because that was causing some of the, get the road storm water issues. Yes. Okay. That's the only thing I had. Anyone else? Budget? Not at this time. Anyone? It should be fixed tomorrow. No problem. Uh, agent's report? I'm not. Uh, chairman's report, I do not have anything. Um, our next meeting is September 25th, 2018, with a deadline of September 13th, 2018. Anybody have anything else to discuss? And with that, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>